Flight of British, Martin Lietke speaking. Hi right, guys, good to see you back. Great Flight of British think tank for what is another mind blowing post. Buckle in. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this one, guys. Okay, it's just the most mind blowing thing, and no coming back from this one. I feel okay, guys. There'll be a lot in this post, there's been a lot happening. There was an interview this morning for a couple of hours, and there's been some news on the truth of community uh, concerning Max Egan. Um, Crowhouse has lost his channel, 236,000 subscribers, 13 years work and 1,000 videos today. Uh, no warning taken out. No, I know how that feels. That's raw. Okay. Uh, it's got a backup channel and a bit shoot channel. They will be linked up in the descriptions box below. Please make sure to um, to subscribe um, and get Max back. Been there myself. It doesn't feel good when that happens. Okay. Now content of this post guys you ready you ready you sure you excited okay it may feel a strange bit strange it may feel a bit haunting but it may feel a bit weird by the end okay <laughs> we're going to talk about a lot of stuff guys okay anything i can present in this i will present on my next post i've just got so much to talk about i'm so much happening now peace and love to you all before we get started hope you're keeping your vibration up okay and not taking any notice of the insanity in the world like me now what we're going to talk about is reset arrivals okay and now after the resets okay we seem to have large amounts of people all uniformed if you like but pretty much the same sort of clothes all turning up in what were empty cities after a reset to populate it okay we've established on these channels okay now the question has been uh, through this okay is where did they come from was it from other lands in here or from maybe lands further north or were they from another dimension or were they from a lab or were they from underground underground any evidence to support that the large amounts of people could have been kept underground i think so and there's going to be a few surprises in this guys okay along the way so make sure to subscribe make sure to please share this out it does help okay by sharing this out so i'm going to share a thousand thoughts um, along the way because i have plenty of thoughts <laughs> okay and plenty to share okay now we're going to start here Whew. bit of a discovery this one now this is the reset or the destruction of san francisco in 1906 and what we witness we've seen on these videos um, many many times i've shown this about twice now is large amounts of people turning up in to market street from the ferry terminal at this end of this street okay aim not aimlessly walking in i mean they're on a mission there's many of them and they all just there's the core building um this thing actually caught fire from the roof down because we surmised that some of the technology was used to um to bombard it or to decimate it not not any earthquake so anyway the large amounts of these people they they're not tourists because they're not looking at the devastation if you want a comparison have a look at some of the footage after real um, events like um dresden bombing and the people are decimated and in shock and in horrified by the des you know the desolation about them it's not what you find here nobody's even looking at it you know they're just off the women are in crinoline long gowns the men are all in all these just what look like demob suits all going somewhere they know where they're going you know there's a sailor it's almost like there's different characters to each role that needs to be played in this new you know phoenician paradigm of the stealing of the civilization you know guys somebody said to me um in a comment yesterday that somebody took one of their friends took dmt and literally 
popped out of this matrix and found himself in a room with two people, two men, and they were looking at a television monitor, if you like, on a large table. And what it was showing was um, reality, this down here, which pushes towards the idea of a simulation or a virtual reality. Okay? And there's lots of pointers towards this. It explains the paranormal, weird shit that's going down. It explains all the anomalies with physics, such as the double split experiment. It explains everything. Now, these people, okay, they are going to where? To a meeting, to a camp, what exactly? These are, look at these two women here. They're not even looking around, they're not, you know, hands not on their mouth of the shock of it all. You'd think they would be, you know, like Mad Max scenes. Now this place apparently had a third of America's gold in it, San Francisco, as well as a plague, of bubonic plague, just prior to this. And you see a lot of footage where the safes are all out on the streets of so some sort of crime took place as well. They cleaned the gold out as well third of America's gold went missing from the city and they eradicated it I think my idea is to stop the spread of, of what was supposed to be pestis or bubonic plague to the rest of America but maybe not but this city was completely destroyed we got film of it three days before and it looks like a stage set like actors these new arrivals where could they have come from across the bay on the ferry from Oakland, maybe. These people are repopulating the city. They've been given properties, okay? And they got like characters. You know, this could be a TV show of sorts. We could be in a movie. We could be in like the Truman Show, like a movie movie, okay? Where there are watchers and they, you know, sort of chuck in um, spanner in the works to see whether you can make it or you know or just get involved maybe take bets who even knows but it feels like it as well stand to this reality is a really haunting film okay it doesn't feel right it's off and you get endless amounts of people all very well turned up walking through ultimate devastation doesn't ring true in my psyche there's something else going on it's not terrorism and they all come out of this big building which is a survivor of the events funnily enough and it is called a terminus like terminal they're like ghosts Look at that lady with the umbrella nothing going on why the umbrella? San Francisco. It's not raining all the time, is it? It's on the Pacific Coast. It's lovely weather there, isn't it? Maybe I'm wrong. I know they have mist all the time, don't they, in San Francisco off the harbour. But yeah, all the way down to the terminal, and there's just many, many people turning up. And we're going to think of ideas. I'll hit you one up now and other ideas later on of other lands and other ideas of where these people come from. For this post, I'm going to think about this. Now, one of my favourite artists we've been looking into for a couple of years now is Piranesi. Okay, and Piranesi does an entire school of engraving on Piranesi's prisons. Now they say they're imaginary. Now, guys, I've been studying Piranesi for a few years now, and myself and a lot of other people in this field think that he actually depicted what he was seeing with his own eyes. Okay, so Piranesi, okay, who is a 18th century engraver, who is absolutely fantastic at it, does a school where he draws massive underground prisons with these see these walkways for people but these things are giant and monumental like you built for giants and giant megaliths and they are built with the mind to carry or hold huge amounts of people just fantasy well, why was he fantasizing about that he nailed the mud flood because he caught it on, on in images and we can t tell you through the you know our channel and records that we found that this flood actually happened in Italy in the Middle Ages and he's depicting it so it's the sewer systems running into it I don't know what these are maybe wires 
the ladders. Um, so yeah, he's done an entire school of uh, thought concerning prisons underneath us. Could they be there, deep down? How would we even know? You can see all the people look on the staircases, living in an underground world, if you like, the underworld. We don't know what's below us at all. I think they've been tunneling all along. I think this place is so honeycombed from you know, the land of giants when it was that it's unbelievable, guys. They show you in the Matrix film, you have them um, flying machines, which are basically hovercrafts, don't you? Um, the Nebuchadnezzar. And they're flying through or floating through antique subway systems for Los Angeles and these are giant tunnels and systems they sort of tell you in the matrix a lot of keys to the reality and having giant underground installations is one of them so the idea out there guys that the new arrivals could have come from giant underground installations because Piranesi has a school of thought of Piranesi's prisons for people large amounts of people okay on the same train of thought okay this I discovered we've been talking about it for a few years but I've seen this okay what we're seeing here guys is excuse me what we're seeing here is a book for the great expositions in Paris of 1900 okay so check out let me just mag this up if you would the plan for it the plan for it now if you follow flat earth british you know i've been posting about for a couple of years circuit board cities now something else has become apparent in my mind since i've been thinking the ways i've been thinking and the new arrivals and everything else that is the uh, shans and that is the plan of that exposition Look into all the expositions and they all share a similar layout. Slightly different, but they all spoil the big central rotunda with the dome, four angels, etc. Now, take a look at this. This is a computer motherboard. So similar it is frightening. The processor itself has these two clips in place. The processor here has two clips in place. It looks like, if you look at a page of motherboards, and they all look slightly different, but in a strange way, they're all the same. Now, you can see these circles, these circles. You can see this thing here, which is similar to, I suppose, a heat sink, and these slits as well, these lines, which look like they might hold ram sticks or something. So, I like I know it's a giant step of the imagination to think that cities could be computers. Hold it, hold it there. <laughs> Piranesi also did these maps of apparently Rome. Okay, now this is hard to avoid now, guys. Okay, that the similarity is frightening. <laughs> oh, it's an amphitheater. Is it really? It's in the same place as the processor. This threw me. I thought, oh wow. Do you see these two slits here? They look identical to the slits of ram sticks. Check them out. And not only that, guys, check this bit here. Yeah, it's got heat sink on it. It looks nothing like an architectural feature. We're looking at a computer component plant here, guys. Look, heat sink, heat sink, main processor. These look like processors. Look, look. The circles they look nothing like architectural features from above even what could this possibly be with all these little tiny slits and circles guys think about it okay what are these blocks of buildings it has loads of different styles of them but they all show exactly the same thing they're Rome and they are circuit board cities and they can be compared to motherboards of the modern day now if that is a factor, which I definitely think it is, look at this. What could that possibly be architecturally? No, he was drawing computer plans, guys, is what he was drawing for the antique world. Because the cities are put on computer layouts. Look at that one. Look at that one. It sinks. 
So saying that's a reality through Piranesi's art and same model on a Great Expositions map, the cities are computers. And they are computing. They were computing in the past and all of the cities now are put on old ancient grid systems that are very much there. Okay, blue lines, whatever you want to say, but they put on the old world. Same footprint. Is it conceivable that these cities today could imitate um, this computing processing power? Like in the film Dark City. Yes, sir? Oh, my epic son Welsh Dragon Metal to hit 5,500 subscribers on YouTube this week. Yay. So that was good. Oh, thank you. That's nice, isn't it? So, yeah, quite mind blowing to think that um, they are looking exactly like computers. So, the way I'm thinking about it is if this is the size of a computer processor in your computer in front of you now, it's pretty small and it's doing all them computations that you need to do what you're doing now. What about a city size computer? What would that compute? What would that compute? What could that compute? Our reality. The firmament, the luminaries, the whole place. All cities seem to be interlocked by um, lines that go into the landscape as well. We've seen star forts also with these petroglyph lines that everything seems to be connected to everywhere else on a massive grid, plain wide, and the city hubs, like all roads lead to Rome, or what well, conduits, electrical conduits, lead to Rome, more like. These main hubs are computer cities. Like the machine city in the Matrix, guys. And what are they computing? What are they computing with a city size computer, guys? Any doubts? It's definitely thinking, in my mind, I'm not having any doubts at this stage, guys. If you have a look, get, pull up a plan of, of, a, of a motherboard and look at these. I'll link up these pictures and do them in comparison, side by side. There's so many features that are identical. You know, the clipping of the processor gets me. It's clipped in. And you know, you get these as well and this. So they all look identical to what you're seeing on Piranesi's Rome for a great exposition. You see? Okay, we'll leave that there. I'll get more on this a bit later. But just, I think it's a definite, and I think computers, cities are computers on a vast scale. You get all sorts of motherboards, and they all look like maps of great expositions and cities of the ancient world guys they do they do for the ram sticks look at this and these you know this thing here and that there as well everything on there looks like off a motherboard <laughs> nothing to do with buildings I know we're moving on what we're going to look into now guys okay in the next part of this is the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican, right? Now, there's been two major events in the last 500 years, okay? Two mud floods, if you like, but two catastrophic events in the last 500 years, two full resets. How is it that the Sistine Chapel and its unbelievable frescoes on the ceiling survived the mud flood? It's in the narrative and this place definitely was there maybe from the renaissance and did survive two mud floods and i'll tell you how and why now so this thing was restored so it was there already okay at this period of i four three uh, seven three and i four eight one okay and michelangelo does the ceiling of the sistine chapel which we're going to look at now which is mind blowing and the last judgment by michelangelo so he's rec he's um, commissioned to do this okay into this pope uh sixtus and he does this works then so there's been a reset since then so i'm trying to you know think in my mind well how come you know rome was underwater and the ceiling of the sistine chapel stayed in place did michelangelo put this stuff up a lot later is it all really recent like all of our history how did this happen 
Now you can see the original chapel and the chapel of today, shown in the 15th century, is a crappy, nondescript building. It's just, I can't get my head around unless it's out of vanity and them evil Phoenicians why they would have a shitty building and put the best artworks in reality on its ceiling. Have you seen it? It's shit. It's shit. Okay, architecturally has nothing. No aesthetics outside. It looks identical to Noah's Ark, though, doesn't it? So there's a clue in its structure. I feel was this. Okay, so they can't really take the measurements because it's such a weird oblong shape and there's all bits and attached. Okay, but first of all, it tells you that it was built with very large buttresses. Now to brace the exterior walls. The walls are exceptionally high. Buttresses in this field will tell you that the building goes a hell of a lot lower, requiring the flying buttress or buttresses. Now, the building is divided into three stories, which the lowest is a very tall basement level. It's got a massive basement level, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Several Euritarian windows and doorways give you the exterior court. Okay, and here they say the vaulted ceiling rises 20 meters above the floor, 66 foot. So when the basement wasn't a basement, <laughs> okay, you only got fooled with mud, <laughs> um, this would have been uh, for giants really, but a lot more. Uh, so I feel yes, it could have been inundated with water. I feel that it could have, they could have put maybe a floor in here because this this thing, this massive sub basement they just talked about. Um, so they could have put board in or something an artificial floor here with the water all underneath this deep or maybe even this deep. Who knows? Um, and this would have kept this from water damage, and it would have survived 500 years and the reset. Yes. This is a mud flood building, but it's in the Star Fort. That is the Vatican. Okay, uh, just absolute crime to humanity. That needs to be sorted out, and it will be. And here it is. Not looking like Noah's Ark in this picture, but firstly, why are the windows so high? <laughs> Who's going to take a look out of them? And then you get the lower on the ground level windows. So she screams mud flood in the drawing of the 15th. 15th century and there she is today um, the most nondescript building you can imagine you wouldn't even really look at it if you were walking past except I would be you know for the Phoenician door arch and stuff this block here has no aesthetics I would not give it any attention at all yet yet it's the inside will blow your mind and here's these buttresses my mind this elevation does not require buttresses this will not buckle and fall in under its own weight okay i think in that these buttresses are so you know acute uh, because the building is going a damn sight lower it could be twice as low below ground level Just think of it as top of a skyscraper it does look like noah's ark no, it's a very strange color to the vatican it's like they got a plaster around every couple of weeks or something to touch your up it always seems so well kept but that is just architecturally shit paper thing there look okay and there it is inside these side frescoes I feel maybe were there but they say in this uh, depiction excuse me that um, the construction of the appearance of the chapel 1840s um, prior to um, Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling but it's barrel vaulted look strange sort of stuff going on here we have got these uh, paintings and tapestries okay and there's some of the artworks you're gonna find inside absolutely fantastic artworks depicting the Renaissance period look at these buildings after uh, triumphs and this central rotunda what are they all doing they having a little rave are they appear to be dancing or running so again the keys to the city and all of that caper there's a lot of sucking up going on and iffiness but what you find on his frescoes this is um, God making Adam Atom which is another 
the whole thing is starting to make sense it's all dropping into place in my mind guys I don't know how many of you are starting to see the picture and starting to see what it is and what, what's going on yeah it's just it's making everything very very fucking strange I tell you that much so these are inside here eh? okay Sistine Chapel um, and it's just the most fantastic artworks inside um, what I got here is this collection is fantastic guys you're gonna love this but it gives you all of the Sistine Chapel's ceiling and you can get in on every single picture on there and it's sinister it is bloody sinister it's all reset and uh, they do Bible depictions like Goliath being slain by David he didn't want to sling and chopped his head off now what I found okay we'll go around some of them in a minute I'll give you the link you won't miss any of this um, is these these parts here these triangles you'll always get a vaulted roof with demons on the roof and people inside like a bunker not like a home like they're cowering in a bunker and the demons are on the roof in every single one of them see what I mean look at the, the, the goat you know the goat's head and uh, and the two evil Phoenician evil deities you see every single one of these side segments is sort of an apocalyptic theme so look at that See the casusus or the snake on a serpent is an electrical charge and everyone is just can't look. The eagle are blind you. So yeah, they're really sinister. You know, some of these, you know. Ancestors of Christ figures, so why are they staying in these little um, alcoves and if they are ancestors of Christ, why are they got demons on the ceiling? Satanic demons on the ceiling so let's take a look at some of these we have a look at uh, so yeah you see Zachariah you see a lot of like studying the scriptures etc and Joel he's checking his stocks and shares on some ticker tape it would, would look like and then you get drunkenness of Noah so I'm guessing this is when he went off across Europe and Ham put a spell on Noah because basically he went off on one across Europe um, trying to increase the population solo pissed um, and basically he hadn't put a spell on him and spiked his drink so he became impotent and didn't get up to no more and done what he was supposed to be doing okay instead of uh, drinking the back of side brew which is uh, why now they're all resetty they're all to do with you get like Noah's flood which is a brilliant picture and the rest you know the Sybil Noah's flood, the deluge. Now uh, I was talking about this this morning on the show that I was on with John Lebon. You know, I I really do think you can get an animal on two by two, but you could definitely get them in a test tube, two by two. Um, I think that they were kept in a lab. I think that the reset people also could be kept in such a, a nature like you know like the Matrix film maybe even for batteries who even knows so yeah the deluge I think there was more than one arc I think that there was many arcs and many survivors I think that the flood was not total and I think there was more than one there was more than one Noah's flood okay Noah was a giant apparently the only good one so that boat would have had to be big so what else we got here Noah's flood um, sacrifice of nowhere. That should be interesting. No, oh, he's got a bundle of rods. Is this a giant fasces? Oh, he's sacrificing a lamb, so slitting its throat. So that is because they require the bad energy and the death. This is not a good trait. This is a Phoenician trait. This is a bad energy trait. This is how they feed. Hmm. Sacrifice. So that's death cult, Phoenician death cult thing. Uh, more of the arts and again you know the Garden of Eden it's always like the serpent around the central column to create a charge this is an electrical field this has to do with um, 
science. <laughs> I think Adam is Adam, and Eve. You know, making him out of his rib, making her out of his rib bone. Well, yeah, you could do that if you, you know, you nailed the lab technology properly, the DNA splicing, etc. Don't you think? This place, apart from it being a movie, and it feels like it's very much a movie, is malleable, which means that it's an illusion meaning that we can change all in this place okay and we will and we will so yes uh, analogy for electromagnetic technology as well and uh, what else we got here on the Sistine Chapel and the creation of Adam so he was created by a creator now you can overlay this this thing here okay with the pineal gland in the mind Okay, the pineal gland in your brain, okay, and it is identical, so it's the pineal gland, isn't it? I'm not sure what he's got there, Adam. It seems to be a hand reaching up and stealing something from here, like little, little hand grenades. And God, yeah, you ever checked out Mrs. God? Yeah, there's Mrs. God. She's a, a looker. She's got his hand round her there. So, obviously, if God had an only son, you know, he's got human attributions and needs okay so he got himself a goddess so God of the Holy Bible he's got like a he's got a wife on the ceiling and she's a looker so yeah a lot of feet washing going on and dawning and a lot of ripping through the portal into this plane now this was a virtual reality and this was a TV a TV show then we're in a portal now and there would be a way out of the portal. I think it's all about portals. I think the time is a portal that we're trapped in. The forward out of a time, I think it could be escaped. So there would be no time. Time is relative, you know. Um, on a sunny day, it can just be blissful and go on forever. On a rainy day, it's just... No, on a rainy day, it can go on forever. On a sunny day, it just goes quick. It's just down to the experience. If you're in a waiting room, the, the clock will go... each second you know I'm driving nuts so yeah it's you know it's not a real concept it's introduced by the Phoenicians again the portal of time this Phoenician paradigm that we find ourselves in you can't even uh, put into words how encompassing it is in all of our reality it's every aspect it's the building you're sitting in the thoughts in your mind um, your language your habits, the way you conduct yourself, the way you think you are, which is introduced by them. You're none of that. You're not. Yeah, you're better off just reinventing yourself, going with your your consciousness tells you who you are. Your consciousness will find your own persona, your avatar, and it will present it to you. Okay, you will feel relaxed, more relaxed than you've ever had been before, and you will be yourself. That's what we all need to do. Instead of oppositional, controlled ideologies driving us down a block end to oblivion is what I think and there's that Phoenician uh, whale thing again so so he must have got a really bad neck doing this Michelangelo unless he was a giant and he'd done this because he's reaching 63 foot in the air he must have had a giant scaffold and this place has a giant sub basement so he has been inundated with mud somewhere along the line you can see that with the windows outside okay so yeah i'll give you that link it's absolutely fantastic the ceiling there's so much more on there for you to go through but you can blow each picture up also there's an art collection gallery through here where you can go through all artists at your leisure okay an artist that is some someone i really really think is fucking groovy is dura abu dura now he's uh, early renaissance so he's like 1400s into the 1500s um, and his paintings are just astounding it's the same with the certain serpent with the apple with the knowledge adam and eve and this is i think it might be noah or moses i'm not sure but everything in here is set like religious characters and they're always with people of the middle ages yeah like the you know the minstrel 
So something's burning in the background, so he's like, you know, can you get me a bucket of water, meaning out the fire, and you put it over him instead. Let's have a look. So there they are. Oh, that painting. And this lady is called The Suicide of the Blonde. I think it was from an In, in Excess record. Um, so she's got a bit of a face like a smack bottom, and she's about to, you know, hurry curry herself. Sipaku. We don't know the circumstances, but she looks the right miserable get anyway. So, yeah, take yourself out of it. Jesus was born in a reset world. Could it be another idea for post reset civilization type of humanity that's brought into this shitty mining operation? Don't get me wrong, there are beautiful parts of this place, you know, Pacific Islands and everything else, but they're still in salty water from this giant mining operation that they brought everybody onto to live. This place is massive. We're on a shitty mining operation. Cattle. Meaningless, knowing nothing about what we really know. And when we find out, and when you, everyone finds out. So, the reset world. Okay, so they took a census when Jesus was being born, didn't they, according to the Bible. So, to see how many people were left after a reset, guys. Okay, they don't include that sort of part of it into the analogy in the Bible. Uh, excuse me, into the narrative of the Bible, but yeah. So these are the Magi, so three magicians uh, coming from the east. They followed a star, a star, well, the star of Bethlehem is what? A UFO, a what? A ship, something technical, yeah? And they followed it and it brought them to apparently Bethlehem, even if that's in the Holy Land, Owl. Um, and they bring in presents, frankincense, gold, and meh, okay? And they've gone all of that way just to say hi. Hi Jesus, hi. Uh, Mary looks like um, an old lady. In fact, she looks like a very weighty old lady. So I don't know what happened to Mary in Devil Depiction. She looks all right. She looks young, but she just given birth. She haven't lost all that weight yet. My, the Magi turned you turned up nice, didn't they? It's like hey, little baby Jesus. He's trying to pull his beard. Look. Wow, babies are ugly, aren't they? Not all. So yeah, this is a Magi. Is that a female? I'm not sure, but out of Tataria, bring in some Barmage. Okay, because you need a bit of Barmage. And it's all set in the Middle Ages, because the Bible stuff happened in the Middle Ages. And this character, and this character, so Siegfried and uh, Mental Block, um, Oh my god, one of the most important people out of the first thousand years of history. Charlemagne. Charlemagne, okay. So, that's supposed to be Charlemagne. In beautiful, beautiful jewels. Fleur de Lis. And him. Okay, so. Orb, scepter, orb, scepter. Look at the state of um, Siegfried. But. He's supposed to be in the thousand years that doesn't really exist, and he's being painted by Dura in 1500s. Okay, so Charlemagne could have been a character, and he could have been around a lot more recent. In fact, all of these characters could have been. In fact, everything I think is more recent. Check this out, though. And it's a clue of the dates as well. I, I, I was thinking, looking at Dura's work, whether there was not even a 1400s. I think they lost a couple of hundred years when there was an apocalypse. But they do, you know, and I know what, J4? Is that 14th century? And a 7-4. So look at this. So you've got a Z and an 8. So I'm sorry, I don't know what that, the designation for that is. Um, Magnus Animus um, 14. So they say in the 14th century, but there's a few anomalies. So there he is. Like they even know what he looks like. He's got that uh, cockeyed thing going on, guys. Like he's um, if you've got a parasite, yeah, if you've got a parasite. I don't mean the you know like a tapeworm. I mean bacchocyte. Um, you see a lot of these stars and a lot of people who uh, got this turn in their eye, slightly cockeyed. He's got it too. He's got it all crunched up and twisted with all the evil fucking shit that he'd done. And look at this. So this is a coat of arms, okay? What day is that, guys? Is 
X, 10, 90, first bit, 1090, what could that be guys, 1090, so what have we got on it, we got a knight, and we have an angel, with a Phrygian happy hat, and a very modern looking costume, so I'm not sure who the coat of arms for, but the date is really anomalous, and you find it was all oh, this Jura's work. He does date his, his um, engravings, but an anomalous too. You know, these could have been them dates could have been acted any time. Check this out, guys. This is Jesus. I, I take it carrying his cross in a medieval ages world with a load of medieval knights. Even, even the griffin or the eagle, excuse me, on the flag. So it's a you know, all of this is going down a modern day by Dura there, look. He always does this symbol, which is like really similar to the survivor's symbol of the post-apocalyptic survivor's symbol. They had a symbol. This is called um, the Martyrdom of the Thousand. And what it is, is basically, we've got a better image, next one up detail. Um, the Martyrdom, or the execution of thousand people. And... They chucking them off the cliff. Now these are your these are your Covites. These are your Obeybos. Okay, people who obey. Okay, it's a cross between Asbo and Obeya. So it's called an Obeybo. Okay, so the Obeybos who are totally fucked and they don't even know it. And it's heartbreaking to see guys. You know, it's not even their fault. Um, but they are not really in this reality, and I don't even think that any of them are capable of critical thought. If the tallies told them something that would contradict it the day before, they would totally go with it and they wouldn't even question it. Critical thought seems to be just not a thing. Like they are NCPs, guys. Like they're not even here. Okay? They are blank. They are, uh, they are everything the telly tells them to do. The television portal using shapes, sounds, vibrations. And technologies you don't understand into your psyche deep controlling through television now this is what they got up to in the past so yeah this is the humanity this these are covite so covid idiots all going off the cliff like a load of lemons but that's not real bbc did that so yeah that's nasty isn't it just smash you in with a club against a tree flatten him out a bit whatever torches we got going on that don't look too bad big pile of deados just chucking them off really in the bushes and finishing them off or ordered by this fat bastard somebody's dragging a kid around there some ginger person who's got a lovely little dog come on you're coming to watch the mass murder i don't want to i don't like mass murders you're coming you bastard so um oh that horse looks nice whoa whoa Check his happy hat, guys. What do you reckon he keeps in there? Can't imagine his head being that big. So, yeah, I loved Jura's work. Look at him looking straight at you. Feeling guilty, are we? Oh, you want to. Because um, you're not going to get away with it at all. Can in this realm, maybe either. You know, listen, there's. there's what we're going to do is we'll locate where Hal is and we'll bomb them. We'll bomb them with fluffy creatures. They will have hundreds of hamsters falling out with their demonic cornflakes cupboards. And the devil will have bunny rabbits hopping around its feet. I, I like it, it's cute, I want to hold it. No, no, I'm evil. So, getting rid of all evil. But we need the evil. Because without the evil, there'd be no good. I know it's crazy, but that's how it works. Without a lie, there's no truth. Without truth, there's no lie. It's just crazy. It's everything is in opposition it needs to be perfect balance so what we got here a homunculus or a doll because that little guy there seems like he's alive and seems to be like a charwalla or like you know getting the flies off baby jesus there's all little ones there as well holy shit what are we looking at they're not dolls guys there's a pair that's a clue that'll be code the pair code i haven't cracked that yet and what are these little critters running around Someone in the back with them as well. Oh, and they're floating around as well. Oh, and they're bringing in a crown. So it could be like a fairy or something. Weird. What about this one, yeah? With the demonic droogy face. Or the demons. Oh, and here. Wow, check his hair. So 
that is praying. What we got with their glass? Nice glass for the era. And half an apple. Code. And this is the crucifixion. Which was seems to be a messy old affair, but I do think that the he got nailed to the ship mast of a ship, a Phoenician ship, is what I think. That's what we think. Little donkey, little donkey. So um yeah, look at this for ostentatious insanity. Emily hosts. Nice uh cape. Superman, bringing Superman down. Or into this realm from uh, you know, just a player. Player in a game. Main player. Because he's the creator or the maker of the source codes. Um, Neil. Neil. Here, I am the writer of the program and I bring you my Neo. He does good stuff. He thinks good thoughts. I like them rabble. So I think it was a bit of that going on. Okay. I don't think it went to plan though. Any of it. Never usually does, does it? So. Do, 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 do. Excuse me. What's going on, y'all? Uh. So. Um, next. Okay, next. Now, I'm going to show you some more images, but we're going to have a little break a minute. All right, then. So, let's come back. Come back for a minute. See what friends, friends of British world. So happy, so lucky, so happy, all. so grateful. Thank you all. No. Yeah, Max Egan's at his channel back. Make sure to subscribe because he is, you know, one of the most famous and greatest, you know, YouTuber truthers in YouTube history. And that's a genuine fact. So, you know, support him with that. And he helped me out once as well. So he's good. He's amazing, actually. So, I've been thinking about lots of stuff, guys. I know and this show I'll be putting out in the next day or two. I'm going to talk with John LeBond this morning. It was a fantastic chat. I really fucking enjoyed that. Goose pimples over and over again for some of the points we hit upon guys you know when you know that you've hit a truth you know you've hit a truth everything shifts and you just feel it straight through you you're like a bit like that circuit board city thing you know i don't think that can be denied you know it's like what are the implications that they're computing what are they computing at that scale and are they still doing it anyway so yeah, make sure to uh, sub to Max, as I said. Now I've got um, a load of vlogs. Now Bavaria and things like that are still, people are writing into me and wanting to go into these places that I have not yet organized, okay? <laughs> Land's coming in and I'm, you know, pointing people in different directions. Nothing happening in Wales at all, or in Britain, or on the, the HQ flat of British front whatsoever, okay? I'm getting sort of hassled really on here, I think. Um, for some weird reason, Patreon, I do thank all my Patreons. Um, I don't put any videos on there because apparently you can get copyrighted um, for them. And I lost my last video from copyright for playing a tune which was from a royalty free site. Which apparently, royalty free, but not in YouTube eyes. It makes it insane. And um, basically, um, yeah, I got copyrighted on that. But. Um, Anyway, I just lost my train of thought. Let's go back to the juice. What we're going to talk about now, right, guys? You're going to love this bit next. Make sure to share this out. Those magnificent men in their flying machines. I found a book. And it is a juicy book. And it shows that the Wright Brothers is indeed bollocks. Okay. The narrative for them. But I'll give you an idea of some of the crazy, crazy airships that they had in the Victorian era, okay, or the Tatarian era, okay. Let's have a look at some of these. But in the beginning, I... Okay. Now this link will give you like just crazy good uh, stuff to do with flight and early flight. So I've been going through some of them. So the book I found is this, and it's Conquest of the Sky, 1495 to 1909. Guys, it's a mind blower. I'll show you some of the things it, it depicts now. 
unfortunately I gotta do it through pictures because it doesn't really load no. they show you different technologies through aerostat now aerostat is the collecting of electrostatic charge from high up because that's where most electrostatic potential actually is the higher up you go it grows exponentially seems to be collected down into a barrel here into these barrels which are probably end up batteries so they're collecting energy using an aerostat so to what level were the Tatarians flying in La Machina Aerostatic? I think was this ships of the sky and they had them the Montpellier brothers are attributed to early ballooning taking off from outside the Louvre etc but I think these are a damn sight earlier and I definitely think these were the process of getting around this place and so to the artists here now I think this is the case in Tataria I think these were probably motorized you could sit in them and some of the device you see in Antiquatech buildings you could just pull up go down a staircase into hall do whatever back up again and your balloon would be packed and I think that this was how the sky would have been a bit like um, you know like Blade Runner or something but you know with balloons and not spaceships starships or anything stupid like that what's that Royal Royal Gas Company 1825 we got there and that's supposed to be in John Bull so 1825 and they're showing you that got some anomalous dates on here look 1790 412 Bubble Office Track and Ruin wonder what that is air supply hang on we got in 1825 we have a gas supply and an air supply in the street for Tatarian vessels anything I don't see in this because uh, it's a think tank please do comment I do go through comments someone asked a lady in my comments does he actually read comments yeah that's where I spend hours and hours of my day every day <laughs> I do because that's where there's juices that's where the action's happening guys in the comments like that comment yesterday about that guy with that DMT trip that flipped me out it's just like yeah yeah you can pop out of this fucking matrix it's just a vibrational change like a radio station on a you know if you listen to radio 2 and you turn it to radio 1 they're both existing at the same time but you can't be in both at the same time just like that change the channel so this is 1904 um, not the Kitty Hawks uh, Kitty Hawks and um, not the Kitty Hawk not the Wright brothers but a French equivalent same year so how how early was actual plane flight now these things apparently had gyros, little electric motor, or little motors and I feel that this could have been maybe a little bit prior to the Wright brothers but they attribute flight to the Wright brothers when exactly the same time as this gentleman here is doing it in France I can't remember his name now but nicer planes altogether than the Wright brothers efforts looks like you know it's not just balsa wood looks like it's going to do something Okay. Uh, photographic evidence. So that's a bit of a sigh up the Wright brothers as well, isn't it? So they're trying to get you away from thinking how all flight is. I think they could definitely do incendiary drops. Elements. I think this must be First World War. I'm not even sure, but look at the Zeppelins there. And like we've seen in that little video, you know, these helicopters, you see a lot of them. We see helicopters way back and parachutes. I've seen parachutes as far back as the 1500s. They're not new. So that one's good. It's got the same old umbrella tech and possibly could get around in it. But apparently they came down and exploded as well. This is 1784, the balloon crashes and bursts into flames so a Hindenburg of the day and the cables you see the cables all the way up there because that is collecting and that's electrostat so they use balloons I can show you evidence now of to what extent they could fill energy plants with balloons why are they doing it now might be the question you know, floating ships 
Even on, you know, science fiction, Star Trek, everything is ships, isn't it? You know, spaceships. It's all ships. These airships. Look at that. Two cockerels. It's beautiful designs. For airships. Let me just whiz through a few. So I've never been in a balloon trip. It's something I was always wanted to do. It's a balloon trip. I think it must be graceful just float through the sky. Just the wind. On a nice day though. Not sure what that is, but it looks like it's towed by some anomalous craft. Force direct directis. <laughs> what do you reckon on that guys? So it seems to be towed. Wow. And um, in the film The Wizard of Oz, um, the Oz Wizard of Oz is taken to Oz through a vortex or a twister in an air balloon. In an air balloon, isn't that a, you know a quinky dink? Oh, that's nice. Zeppelins, planes. What's the date on that one? 1909. Wow. So it's before the First World War. What's with these heads and the aerials? That's in Berlin, 1909. They've got like they're not keeping their hats on, are they? They're just aerials. This is a job for our French translator. <laughs> oh. That's defence. So I'm not sure if that's just an it's an electromagnet. They would have to uh, take the electric out of the magnet in order for the ordinance to, uh, unless it's just delivering them, because there's a giant star fort, cannons by air and magnets. Past. I can fly, I can fly. No, you can't, you silly get. But I can. So I'm not sure what's happening, but she's looking to chase him over some sort of flamethrower. I think his butt's on fire. A lot of that going on lately. This must be the climate. So, oh, nice Phoenician, uh, not nice, but you know, aesthetically. <laughs> so, yeah, loads of ideas for ships in the past. Whiz through more. So, the dates are all off, these have been used right back. I would say in all resets. And I think further back you go, the more advanced, you know, like the manners using Mercury for levitation, all of that was going on. So look at the size of that bugger. I wonder how many people that could take. Um, 1834, my word. We went up the Champs Elysees, eh? How many people did it take? I can't see that. Wow, so what drove it? 1834. Electric motors, no doubt. Interesting. So, yeah. Tataria, Tataria, and balloons. Look at that one. Fourth. And parachutes as well, you can see. We're on a long time. Decorative plates with balloons on. Now, I can't go through them all because there's literally hundreds, but I'll give you the book and you can go through it yourself. I'll put in the descriptions. And it's showing things like, you know, moving a man on a horse on his own private blue. How about this one? Subscription. 200 minutes of 50 franc can get you a floating fish well that's cool um, and this platform with like you know HG Wells kit on top and I got a swan figurehead do you like that 50 quid and it's yours yeah I know it's not bad is it <laughs> wow we have some juice on you so what's this one just as playing with a with whatever it is and you can ride around them like this well look the bunkers are there under these windmills after events and he's blowing trumpets hmm. he's blowing trumpets isn't that interesting so yeah something that's overlooked definitely is the level of air transport in the past parachutes Look at this parachutes and what the hell is that carried by birds I think that might be just fanciful but yeah parachute 1617 guys the parachute 1617 they were using a parachute because they were higher 
in 1617 and not just jumping over towers. Wow. All of history and everything they taught us is utter bullshit. Look at this. Atmospheric locomotive. <gasps> Steam powered dirigible carrying a frig load of people. I wonder how far that could go. Even sails on it to directionalize it by here, looks like. But wow, guys. 1852. Ah, oh, 1850. It says fantasy, but I, I don't think so. They always say that. They say myth is mythos, and I think myth is reality. I think they want you to think that myth is mythos, meaning giants and all of these, you know, these. Mythologies, Greek mythology, Celtic mythology, Norse mythology. I think there's something in them all. And there's too many of them overlapping as well. Look at this one. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh no, I think he's messed up. He's just on with one hand. He'll float down, he'll be alright, he won't break his legs. Is that Vader? In his spaceship? Photographic Vader. So they were taking photographs in um, 1860. 1860. 1860. And planes. Um, what is the date on this plane? 1843. Even they had a plane, did they? Well, if that's the case, then it's sort of killing any official narrative. Stone dead, isn't it? Aeroplane 1843. Well, that's certainly what it says, guys. 1844, and it was a reality. It was an aeroplane. What about this steam-powered monster? Looks like a city. And mortal engines. And that one. Carrying huge... Like, I don't even know. Navigation to do with navigation now this has to do with, with aerostat yes indeed big pylon and a balloon at the top or a parachute oh you can go on there for a ride and jump off now we've seen these haven't we in them old french booklets where you get phoenician creatures and they seem to be having some sort of battle going on with these winged people you see them it's technology i think it's these umbrellas and these wings at a tech i think they were real 1763 these wingsuits wingsuits guys they're a reality you now aren't they drop off, drop off planes with them what about that one <sighs> Ezekiel's wheels machine voltaic electricity what's the date oh my days ah <gasps> 1775 that looks like Ezekiel's wheels Yeah, what a find. So electrical flying machines as well as aeroplanes in the 1700s here, guys, by the way. Parachutes in the 1600s, proving that they had flights, because you're not going to be just jumping out of towers with parachutes, because that's just stupid. And the parachute would catch anyway on the way down on a statue, and you'd all die. You'd die. Um, and massive aerial bombardments, okay, fatillas of, of balloons, which we got many depictions of in the past. Now let's move on. Aerial battles and zeppelins is going into a later period now, I believe. No, 1709 Portugal. Wow, did that fly? I would love to have seen that. And these people were just wings. People were getting around. <laughs> people were flying. Like that. I love it. I love it. Or plain uh, bird guided balloons or horse uh, lifting balloons here they are those magnificent when in their flight what's this the water wagon in their flying machines they go up to the up up they go down to the down down jets on St. Cloud jets I don't think they're going to be jets jets are they balloons 
So yeah, you got the swordfish. Three men riding that. This is from further back in time, from ooh, 1784 apparently. You got flying fish. I wonder what it's running on. That looks very electrical. That from bit on the front. <laughs> uh, so, excuse me. Let me just get out of here if I can. So oh, there you are, flying machines in antiquity. We'll look at some more of them in in the, in the future. We're going to have some images of the day shortly and some beautiful music for your enjoyment. Um, and I will be uh, wrapping it up shortly. So make sure to subscribe and make sure to share this out, guys. If you don't know, because I'm like thousands or thousand fifteen hundred turn up every month for the juice. <laughs> Welcome all. And my last video was in fact a mind splatterer. Yeah, the I you know the feedback and in fact all of them just recently I've just been you know just mind blowing. And if you don't know, this is all the things you can find out about on Flat Earth British. We have many channels. Now I have the Celtic Tatarian channel. This is a thousand videos tens of thousands of books and links and pictures and maps and everything you can imagine on this channel and how this whole uh, thing uh, came about is all on that channel check it off okay because it is fantastic and flat earth british think tank just going at the 10,000 subs we have um, hangouts on there and we do think tank and have guests and we're going to do a lot more of that okay I'm going to do another interview another show with Campbell from Autodidactic Channel also UAP we're going to be three of us hooking up together I've just been really really busy with other interviews I was up all morning another interview um, and I've got mountains of emails too I noticed some people in my emails and I've got back to you yet I've asked for hangouts and stuff but you just have to wait I'm going to write all of this down and I'm going to work through them we indeed do um, plenty of new people new ideas and bringing them in on a bigger format like this okay and you know share ideas and see what people can put on the table basically <laughs> Um, and there's a channel there that I hardly ever use, which I'm going to utilise for consciousness studies very shortly. And there's a website, okay. Now, the photo dro dro drop is fucked, okay. Now that's down to Google, not me and Lee, okay. I don't know what's going on with it, but my emails, even this morning, somebody said in my comments, I bought two books of you, and my reward is no think tank photo drop. Well, I'm really sorry about that, but I can't be responsible for fucking Google, can I? Okay, my book, my book, the mind blowing, excuse me, which I think I'll play because it's beautiful and I got plenty more subs have just arrived so I'm just going to really reduce my volume, I'm going to play this because it's beautiful.
make sure to buy my book, The Holy Grail of a Flat Earth, okay, by Martin Lika. I will be linking all of this up, okay. But funny how that video was made, you know, last year, and it says, like, what if we were reset again, and now they're calling this year the Great Reset. No quinky dink, but I've been talking about resets for years now, and then we're in one. Anyway, images I'm going to show you, okay. Oh, well, I'm feeling trippy after all this today, I'm telling you. Very strange. And I've got so much I could show you guys, I really have. But we'll go through some images of the day, so some some cool funny ones in here as well um, I've got this photographic collection of Italy, I'm going to show it next time but it's just mind blowing for some reason, there's nobody about hardly, okay, say these people and the streets are just spotless, like they've just been laid all the way up to these mud flooded windows I've been going through them with some detail but it'll take some time to go through we'll do it at a later date, in fact i got the next post literally um, ready okay, so what we got here, Passage Theatre, beautiful Tatarian Twin Towers, and this is a beautiful image of Tataria. how it would, it would have been. The skies are blacked out and whited, you know, vanilla sky, they're probably hiding the balloons. <laughs> oh yeah, this is so fucking true. In my generation, alright, I had Wonder Woman. In this generation, <laughs> you wonder if it's a woman. <laughs> we had Linda Carter. Yeah, my generation, because we were so fucking lucky. Yeah, we had miniskirts. Yeah, I'm from the 60s. I'm not lucky. I know. <laughs> France. Devastation. Franco Prussian War, 1870. Gonna take them out. Giants. A giant foot found from a giant statue. Can't even imagine them. 100 foot high. And a giant crown. Probably to go on the giant's head. And this, I think, is on display in St. Petersburg today. But that's not where it originally was, by the look of it, because that is his original place. What this is here, I don't know. But it's a giant's crown, no doubt, bowery, and a giant's. I can't imagine the size of that, guy's, uh, that statue. Wow. Uh, statues of the Orient. Just looking at that Pegasus, they have Pegasus in the Oriental uh, faith as well. And this we've seen a few times, this is what it looked like before, the Antiquitech device. And this is it now at the bottom of a lake. Now you'll find this all over. You'll find um, Lake Mead in America swallowed up a town called St. Thomas, which had beautiful Tatarian buildings. So they get rid of a lot of buildings through um, basically dams and man-made lakes which also cause a lot of weight on the on the surface uh, causing uh, fissures and such like and uh, can cause uh, earthquakes spiral staircases I absolutely adore look at this one how it shoots off that way so that one goes into that and then further up somebody um, I want to thank Azad in fact I want to thank everybody who does shares on Facebook and I want to thank everyone who does shares on my Instagram account oh, they will be linked they're very popular now some of the stuff as I posts is just amazing on my Facebook. So this is an um, anomalous tower we've seen before. It's serrated, so I think it's flood protection to break up a wave or something. And the bottom's been eaten from water erosion. And you find this on castles in Britain. I think the thing went a lot taller and I think it's a way into underground installations possibly. Or an arrival point, like a bunko booth after a reset. What about this place guys? The Palace of Imagination. The Palace of Imagination. It's very... Again, again a bit of the uh, Coral Castles about this place. <laughs> it looks a bit Coral Castle. Leeds Skillin's Coral Castle. It's fantastic isn't it? And Tataria. And that's the Corbin Hotel, Corporation Street in Birmingham. I wonder if that's still there. Anyone in Brum, let me know. I didn't notice it last time. This is fantastic. Check this out. Solar motors or engines. Okay. So engines. Okay. Running on solar power. Lens for focusing sun rays. Sorry, I haven't got the rest of it. Okay. Oil circulating pipes. 
oil circulation pumps, steam water, heating condensing, all from this device collecting sun rays. Did they do it? Did they have it? <laughs> yeah, they had it. So I don't know, this is for a really unusual depiction. I don't really know what's going on, but these seem very, very technical, like they're ba you know, batteries by the look of them. And this one's got a reflection of a steam sh of a sail ship in it, spiral staircase. And this, first thing I thought of is this is like the Aldridge in the Philadelphia experiment. Is this thing going to disappear and reappear in Norfolk Harbour? You know the time travel story of the Philadelphia experiment. It's what it looked like, guys. Can you see that? It's like it's just going to disappear and reappear somewhere else. <laughs> so, Tartaria, Tartaria with all their crazy roof tech. Everything's up. Everything's up in the air. Even the statues, look. See? Looking down. Look at the size of them statues. How the hell did they build them there? This glass-fronted building. Wherever it is. Maybe Germany. And the Phoenicians and a statue at the top. Even the Olympic Games is a part of it. There you are. There's... Um, in the days, Victorian days, before they, you know, introduced petrol, all these cars were electrical powered. And even in the days of the penny farthing, you have essentially two penny farthings. Um, nice seats, brake gearing system, and batteries. Batteries. Electric travel they had before they had petrol. I'm not sure what's going on with these dudes. It looks like a load of tomats to me, but look at them. I don't know if this is actually there or it's been overlaid. I can't confirm or deny whether this shit's going down. But apparently, they're all worshipping Balfamet. Which I think is a thing anyway, isn't it? No. With them, I mean. I'm talking about them. This is uh, somewhere else that I do not recognise. But uh, the reason I like this is because I thought the four towers looked very, very technical. And the way that they're you know, serrated or crossed or harlequined. So, has this place suffered the mud flood? <laughs> no, they just got some giant diggers and put them all up to the door, didn't they, guys? No, man, this has been inundated. Mm, inundated. Not long before this has happened. And the towers are smashed. So, yeah, mud flood. And an event. Frank Zappa knew about all the shit that was going down now. He's got a song that's actually on my Flat Earth British Think Tank channel which has not been deleted and is still on there called The Slime. I made a video to go with it. It was fucking brilliant. I, I absolutely love that video. Let's check it out. Anyway, it's on my Think Tank channel. I am the slime that oozes out of your TV screen. And as Frank Zappa will show you, so you take a crap, it goes down there, and it comes out your television screen. Fact. Yeah? It's the worst thing ever. What is the matter with them all? They're either NCPs are not part of the game, okay or they are um, under a massive gnosis uh, to a, a, monument, a monumental level okay they're all they will fight to protect their there's a virus and we could all die and they don't even know what death is because they're talking from absolute and don't even know what they mean i thought this was unusual palabulum they were reflecting the light of a crucifix through a diamond eye and it came out the other end and there's like a holographic upside down cross and a cross that is inverted. So that would have been a mirror. What were they trying to achieve? Holographics, is my guess. Hmm? Oh no. And this is in um, basically Dresden. Dresden in Germany. This should be a byword for this movement, Dresden, the tragedy of that city and their people. What went on in the fucking Phoenicians? I hate to think of it, guys. I really do. So yeah, this is a map of um, the Asian, from the Asian world, and they show a massive continent underneath us, so massive lands connected to South America, Del Fuego, Land of Fire, and all these beasts. You got the Gorgon, you got the Dragon, you got the Devil, Diablo, Death, Moors. Isn't that interesting? Moors. So, there could be lands further out or lands in here with us. We don't know the depth, you know, the enclosure we're in. We don't know the dimensions. We're just told, okay? Um, all of the Phoenicians, all of the reset people could have easily come from these lands out here, no problem. Um, but I feel something else is going on. 
more unusual as with parabolum and reversing of images through maybe mirrors see through a hole in the wall that's reflected a sun on the mirror for what purpose so they can examine sunspots maybe this was sent in to me by Auto Didactics channel, Campbell, a couple of days ago, guys. What do you reckon on this, Matt? At first I thought, well, it looks like it suffered some flood damage, this building. But what you find is it's made some sort of unusual tap hauling. And these are taps, the artworks are taps. So, like, hollow, again, hollow history, temporary. And what's the size of these tables? And these chairs look really big. So this is like a reset bullshit stage set everything's fallen apart through the last reset and it's just a giant hole for feeding vast amounts of people it's really sinister guys this is really sinister the hollow past check that building I love this building this is a really early photograph I got the collection of France I'm going to show them next time but this returns here it's got some character to it yeah I really dig that and look at how the windows are literally on the ground He's indeed a mud flooder. We'll look into them again. Oh, so I posted um, back, it's on this channel, ooh, six months ago, a collection of German palaces. I've got the collection again, um, because of Captain Kirk, um, you all know Captain Kirk by now, um, who's basically linked on my Flat of British websites. All of the channels are on there. Um, we posted these German palaces where he went through. There's date anomalies where, again, they're showing the added thousand years. Uh, pigment prints, but uh, I thought this was cool. Got a screenshot: the peacock over a pot. pot. And we proposed on the last post that peacocks could have been homunculi,es you know, homunculus, or bred in flasks and use a peacock. And they're very unusual, beautiful creatures. Something that they would introduce, you know. Uh, I felt that was a clue. And here we are in Italy again. Florence and you have the Gorgon and the head chopped off by Perseus and all of these unbelievable statues just out left in the street you go there in the modern day somewhere just want to see that statue and these statues as well really want to see that and there it is again and this is a depiction modern day um, imitating Piranesi's prisons like they're a reality the Phoenician locks these gantries, this is underneath Paris where all their millions are, you know the levels of the catacombs, they go deep 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 deep. Tribal of Correctioners, which is a prison, no, no doubt about it, under the city, huge ancient, could they be keeping people down there, underground. Well there's a school of thought that thinks that's a reality guys, just saying, they do. So there's some images there, I'm going to give you some more images now, and what I'm going to do, because they're so fantastic, these are all ant antiquity, and what they're showing is religious depictions, doors, bash reliefs, and stuff from antiquity, but, I've got to leave the room for a second, I'm going to put a bit of cool, beautiful, classical music on for you, it will not hurt, it will be nice, and some images, and I will be back shortly, okay, okay make sure to subscribe, please, and make sure to subscribe, Share this out, share this out, that's right. Anyway.
that worked out. <laughs> I just want to show you one more thing before I go. I got so much, you know, as I can show you these royal palaces, Italian photos, Siam and stuff, but um, I need to get on. But these in, are Dura's engravings. He also done um, etchings. And they're just like crazy, you know, this the boiling a woman up here for, or a man, for, I, I suspect, food. But they're boiling him. And apparently, according to this, there are two types of Phoenician guys, because this is called the Battle of the Water, um, the Sea Gods. Battle of the Sea Gods is this, this is a name for this one. Same anonymous, anomalous date, 1x, 9x. You know, he does it a lot in these, um, crazy crazy etchings that he does like this demon taking this woman very very sinister this time so uh, I'll go through some more of them in my next post because there's plenty of it but very very trippy amazing stuff Look at this, raining from the sky, fire and brimstone, just everyone's just running and petrified and scared. Uh, beating somebody to the head with the Edward clubs. You always see these in these depictions. People getting hurt. And the same thing, the martyrdom of the thousands in a in an etching as well. So he does a lot of mass murder or ethnic cleansing and stuff as he catches. So I'm gonna come back guys. Well, thank you very, very much for everything. Shares, the stuff you send in my emails is fantastic. Okay, glad no one's sending me anything to do with the bullshit of, um, you know, Sharona or the TV virus because I'm not doing that with this, my reality at all. Um, and we haven't, and this is why we're thundering ahead. So let me just give you a brief synopsis on what we looked at today. Okay, guys, we're looking into where the new arrivals could have come from. Is Piranesi's prisons showing us where they come from? It's one idea. The second <laughs> is a mind blower. It would look like that through Piranesi's art again and plans of expositions that they're based on electrical motherboards, computers, circuitry. They are practically identical, really. Um, you can place a lot of these components with on the map. It's just mind blowing. So. If this is the case, which I think it is, then cities are computers, and they're computing something, guys. Um, just like Dark City, <laughs> the movie. Um, and we'll be looking into Dura, whose art is fantastic, and a lot more besides. I hope you enjoyed. Now make sure to subscribe to my mate Max Egan, because that was he was, you know, he was not a very happy bunny this morning after losing everything. At 13 years work, guys. Don't I'm sorry that you don't know. It's just a bad feeling. I've gone through it myself. I nearly lost four years work last year. I got it back though. Um, and my son Welsh Dragon Metals. We just did 500 subscribers this week. So congratulations to my son Lawrence Leaker. Well done, Lawrence. Keep him, keep him going. Okay. Salvage is is the new thing in a post reset world. So you'll, you'll make a killing now. So make sure to subscribe to my son. He'll be in the descriptions box a little below this video and everybody else that I've mentioned and everything else. So I'll be back very very soon. Please share, sub, and like the video. Get it out there into YouTube to choose the truth. Alright, thanks. Peace and love to you all. Be good. And don't do anything I wouldn't do, and I'll be back very soon. Okay? I've got another interview to put up, probably on my Think Tank channel, in a day or two. So keep a lookout for that as well.